Hello. Today we're going to talk about wireless tech networking and wireless technology. Um, specifically, we're going to talk about radio broadcasts and kind of how it all works. So wireless networks encode data into electromagnetic carrier waves. <coughs> The most obvious consequence is that wireless broadcasts aren't confined to the path of the wire. These are called boundless networks, networks that are not confined to a path of a wire, and networks that are confined to a path of a wire are called bounded networks. So depending on the type of transmitting antenna used, they might go in all directions, or they might be focused in one particular direction. But wherever the broadcast goes, it travels outward in a straight line until it's stopped by something. And that something could be a wall. It could, be, um, it, it could just be stopped by attenuating out. Um, but usually, it's going to be a wall or some other type of a uh, something like that. Obstacles can block the transmission causing attenuation. Even without anything blocking it, the signal drops off rapidly with length from the transmitter. It's just the way it works in every kind of networking. Wireless connections can't really be shielded from interference like a wire can either, because if you shield it from interference, then you're shielding off the transmission. Wireless transceivers. The connector of every wireless node includes a transmitter and a receiver. And so since it transmits and receives, they're usually connected into a single device called a transceiver. A radio transceiver itself receives and transmits data as electrical signal, and then it converts them to radio waves and from radio waves. So the data gets converted to a radio wave and goes out of the transceiver, and then it brings the radio waves in and it converts the radio waves from radio waves back into data. The antenna itself can have an omnidirectional coverage area, which means that it transmits and receives equally in all directions, or it can have a unidirectional, which means it's focused in one particular direction. It just depends on the way you set your network up and the way your wireless router, uh, the type of wireless router you have. The most common omnidirectional antenna form factors are the stick-like monopole or dipole antennas included with most wireless access points or found on radio receivers. Now, you will find those on wireless access points, but you find a number of them. So there's usually like six. So even though they are, um, they may go in one or two directions, you have six of them, so they're going in six or 12 directions. Directional antennas include dishes. So that would be like your dish network. You can use those for satellite um, networking. Um, elongated Yagi antennas, or even jury rig devices like a monopole put inside of a potato chip can. People used to actually, when Wi-Fi was not ubiquitous, used to be that it was actually really hard to get Wi-Fi. And when it was not ubiquitous, ubiquitous means when it was not everywhere. Um, people would go around stealing other people's Wi-Fi access and they did it with, one of the most popular ways to do it was using a Pringle scan. Um, they put a monopole antenna inside of the Pringle scan and the Pringle scan would amplify um, the antenna and, and receive the signal and then allow the person to sit, like sit out in their car and use the Wi-Fi from a, another person's house. Anyways, it was really weird. Because of how radio transmissions work, a transceiver by nature is half duplex. So that means it sends, uh, it cannot send and receive at the same time. Um, and it can't even listen for who else might be transmitting. So it can't listen to see if there is another device on the network that is transmitting. So you can end up with collisions in a Wi-Fi network. So here are the antennas that they were talking about. Um, up over here is the Yaga antenna. Um, it's a unidirectional antenna. And then this is the Pringles can antenna I was telling you about that can be used to pull in and strengthen Wi-Fi signals that are weak. And then you can use them on, you can drive around and steal people's Wi-Fi. 
So for managing bandwidth, you've got some options. You could strictly keep a wireless transmission to its own channel in what's called a narrow band transmission. Narrow band transmission uses just one channel. The problem with that is it leads to limited data rate, meaning you don't have as much options for uh, your speed of your data, and it's very susceptible to interference. If there's something else on that band that is working, a vacuum cleaner, microwave, uh, another Wi-Fi signal, bam, you're dead in the water. Wire, most wireless uh, technologies, including Wi-Fi, use different techniques to increase bandwidth and deal with interference so that you don't have the problems that you would have with narrow band transmission. And one of them is called spread spectrum. And what spread spectrum does is it breaks the transmission into a large number of sub-channels on nearby frequencies. To completely avoid interference, this means you want to keep different Wi-Fi hotspots a few channels apart. So the way spread spectrum works is um, your Wi-Fi will have a channel or two that it works on. And um, when the data is broken up, the, remember it is broken in packets and then in frames and then into bits and the bits are ones and zeros and then it's going to be transmitted into radio waves, and those radio waves are going to travel on frequencies and sub-frequencies. But it's going to be, the Wi-Fi access point is going to determine what channels it actually travels on. So, if spread spectrum, what it does is it takes those frequencies and it spreads them along the spectrum of the frequency that is being used so that it might be, some of the data might be here, 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 and they just hop along those frequencies until they get to the receiving computer, which will then gather in all of the bits and take it and re um turn it into data from from the frequency uh from the signal from the radio signal and bob's your uncle you got your data back it's really kind of cool so here's kind of an example of spread spectrum so you've got this guy sending some data and it can go on this channel it can go on this channel it can go on this channel so part of the data is going on this frequency the a part part of this data the b part is going on this frequency and the c part is going on this frequency and when we get to this side it's going to be decoded as a b c it doesn't matter um, which frequency it is um, being sent on and received on the packet or the message gets sent and broken down and then received exactly the way it's supposed to be received. Now, spread spectrum should not be confused with multiple input, multiple output transmission found on some wireless devices. So if you look at that picture that I have down in the corner of a wireless router, you'll notice that there are multiple, um, what are there, eight different um, antennas on that. Those are MIMO antennas or MIMO, MIMO antennas, multiple input, multiple output antennas. And what happens, uh, what a MIMO device does is it uses those multiple antennas to simultaneously transmit and receive separate data streams on the same channel without having them interfere with each other. Those antennas are omni are, are omnidirectional so they go in one direction so you've got or not omnidirectional they are monodirectional so they go in one direction so you've got but you've got all your directions covered because they are um, all around the device so let's say you've got a great wireless network but it just isn't reaching as far as you need it to it's kind of, it's harder to simply scale up a wireless network than it is a wired one. With a wired one, you can add a switch and um, there you go. Uh, add more nodes, you're good to go. Um, you may have to add, add a router and another subnet and then a switch, but 
pretty much, it's pretty easy to expand a wired network. The problem with wireless networks expanding is that your transceivers have a limited range and only one transceiver on a given frequency can transmit at a given time. So it's not like you can just add a whole bunch more transceivers because then you're going to have a whole bunch of problems, lots and lots of traffic. So you do have a few things you can do. You can add a repeater, also called Wi-Fi extenders, to cover more area, but that the problem with those is that they reduce bandwidth. Um, they're fine for if you don't care about that. So for example, I have one repeater in my house. It repeats to my neighbor's house. My neighbor is this sweet little old lady who can't afford internet on her limited income. So I have a repeater and she uses the internet on her cell phone and that's all. Uh, the limited bandwidth, because it reduces my bandwidth, that repeater does. It doesn't reduce the bandwidth in my entire network. It's just the repeated bandwidth is reduced. Doesn't impact her. Doesn't matter to her. You can also add more wireless channel access points with overlapping coverage. This is called a mesh network. You can actually buy mesh setups, and um, I have one in my house. It's the Google Mesh, but there's also Obi, a um, couple other ones, and they work really well. Um, and what happens then is that your network will have your users will connect to whichever is the strongest access point and they connect to each other. There's one main one, and that main one is the one that runs the network. And then there are other ones. They're like extenders, but they do not cut the uh, bandwidth down. The only problem it, with that approach is that you have to make sure that you do buy a wireless mesh network, you don't just go out and buy a bunch of wireless access points and set them up separately. If you do set them up separately, you have to set them up as ex network extensions. You can't just set them up as separate wireless access points. Otherwise, you got a bunch of different wireless networks going on in your house and they have to all be separately administrated. Um, if you've got, if you do want to do that kind of thing, you do have a couple of different routers, and you uh, you can do enterprise wireless access points. So those are designed for centralized administration, and you use those with your like your Windows 2019 server, and everybody's got a username and a password. Um, they're called thin access points, and they can be centrally managed through a device called a wireless LAN controller. And they um, that allows them to share configuration data and function as a single larger network. So that would be something you would do in an enterprise network. In a small office, home office network, you would probably just purchase a mesh network setup, like I was saying that I have. If your enterprise has multiple locations, you can even take it a step further by connecting your wireless access points through the internet to a cloud-based network controller, which serves the same role as the wireless LAN controller. Um, and then basically the packets just travel through the network to the other network and from the other network through the network, through the internet to your network. It's pretty nifty. Another popular solution is a wireless mesh network, which is pretty much what I talked to, where the nodes communicate, talked about, where the nodes communicate and relay communications as peers rather than individually connecting to a wireless access point as clients. There are other wireless technologies that you should be familiar with. We have RF radio frequency. RFID, Bluetooth, NFC, um, uh, near field communication, Ant Plus. Now, Ant Plus is a Garmin thing. Garmin is a wearable device for people who run or swim or ride bikes, um, hike. And the way that Garmin's connect to your computer is through Ant Plus, but there's other places that use it as well. Um, Z-Wave is a proprietary standard that's maintained by Silicon Labs. It's commonly used for interrupt, interrupt, interoperable, excuse me, monitoring and remote control of home um, 
automation systems, so lighting control, thermostats, household appliances, and security systems. Zigbee is really similar to that. It's just, it's a personal area network standard. It's similar to Z-Wave, and so they're kind of competing standard, standards. But you should know that Zigbee and Z-Wave are out there, and that that's what you would do if you were setting up a client's, uh, or even in an office, um, automation. And that's the end of our lecture for today. Um, let me know if you have any questions and have a great day.